In February 1976, Uganda's President Idi Amin shocked Kenyans by laying claim to all of Kenyan territory west of Naivasha. In effect, half of Kenyan territory. According to Amin, the territory had been part of Uganda before 1927, when the British ruled what is today Kenya and Uganda as one territory, and had been unfairly incorporated into Kenya after the partition. In March, anti-Amin rallies were held throughout Kenya. Some were organized by the government, but many were spontaneous. The following month, the Kenya government began a quiet and unannounced blockade of essential fuel and other goods bound for Uganda. But even as the blockade was on, an Air France Airbus was hijacked in Athens, Greece by a group of Palestinians and pro-Palestinian commandos. From Athens, the plane flew to Libya, and from Libya all the way to Entebbe. Aboard the Airbus were 250 hostages, close to 100 of whom were Israelis or people of Jewish descent. On the morning of July 4th, Israeli commandos landed at Entebbe airport, shot dead all the hijackers and 20 of Amin soldiers, and rescued all but two of the hostages. On their way back from Entebbe, Israeli transport planes carrying the rescued hostages and the team of 200 or so who had carried out the daring raid stopped at Nairobi to refuel and to have some of the hostages treated in Nairobi hospitals. This stopover convinced Amin that Kenya had been in the know about the Entebbe raid and vowed Uganda would avenge herself for it. Within days, Uganda had cut off electric supplies to Kenya from the Jinja hydroelectric power station. The feud between the two nations was eventually referred to the Organization of African States, where a peace accord was negotiated and signed in August. Uganda agreed, amongst other things, to put an end to hostile propaganda against Kenya. On her part, Kenya agreed to let Ugandan goods move freely through her territory. 1976 was the year Attorney General Charles Njonjo blocked an attempt by Gikuyu Embu and Meru Association Gemma leaders to change the constitution, so as to bar Vice President Daniel Arap Moy from automatically succeeding President Jomo Kenyatta in case the latter died. Of late, Kenyatta had looked somewhat frail, and Gemma leaders were determined that his successor be someone from among their own communities. Gemma's position had been stated at a meeting in Nakuru in September, addressed by Gemma chairman and nominated MP Njenga Karume, Gemma organizing secretary and MP for Nakuru North, Kehika Kimani, and former Minister for Foreign Affairs, Njoroge Mungai. Almost immediately after the meeting, Attorney General Charles Njonjo, a close ally of Vice President Daniel Arap Moy, issued a statement warning that it was a crime tantamount to treason and therefore punishable by death to contemplate the president's death. There followed protests from Gemma leaders about Njonjo's threat, but on October 11th, a cabinet meeting held in Nakuru and chaired by Kenyatta, but not attended by Njonjo, upheld Njonjo's ruling and warned proponents of the constitutional change to desist forthwith from making any more public statements on the matter. For the following few months, Gemma would adopt a low profile regarding Kenyatta's succession. On the business front, 1976 was the year the East African Railways Corporation broke up after Tanzania announced it would set up its own railway system. It was also the year the Kenya government signed an agreement with a Japanese firm to construct a new bridge at Nyali to connect Mombasa Island to the north coast. In international affairs, 1976 was the year the United Nations Council for Trade and Development, UNCTAD, held its fourth session in Nairobi, addressed by the UN Secretary General, Kurt Waldheim, and US Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger. That year, too, Margaret Kenyatta was appointed Kenya's first permanent representative to the United Nations Environment Programme, UNEP, which is headquartered in Nairobi. 
In sports, 1976 was the year Kenya and many other African countries boycotted the Olympic Games in Montreal, Canada to protest New Zealand's participation because New Zealand maintained sporting relations with apartheid South Africa. It was the year Brazilian soccer legend Pele visited Kenya to meet fans and the year Joginda Singh, partnered by David Doig, won the Safari Rally.